kick it, Jackie Chan. Oh, Jamar Chase with the dive. You know, Garrett Wilson's wide open. Garrett Wilson, touchdown Barrett. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video in the World of Juice channel and welcome back to another episode of the rebuild of the 2012 Cleveland Browns and changing their history. That is right, we return and finally last episode I did the dang thing and I won a Super Bowl. It had taken me I think four straight tries before that. Four straight years, four straight episodes, we got to a Super Bowl and lost in humiliating fashion. Different levels of humiliating fashion, but humiliating fashion nonetheless. But then last episode, in the fifth try, I finally got it done and we won a Super Bowl. The monkey came off my back and we've got ourselves a Lombardi Trophy here in Cleveland. Something that Cleveland has been wanting since they've been back in existence. So... Now the goal is not only to go back to back, but to complete this dynasty that we want to build here, similar to what we did with the Giants in 2015. Now we only have a few more episodes left to go because we are getting close to the modern era, the modern day, and we're not going to go past the 2024 NFL draft. So there, well, we're not going to, yeah, we're not going to do the 2025 NFL draft, basically. The 2024 NFL draft will be the last episode of the series. So... Or actually, we'll do we'll do the the draft, the 2024 draft, and then the subsequent season will be the next episode. So when the 2024 20, rookies are actually rookies, that'll be the last season. So only a few more episodes left. We got to try to build this dynasty. Let's go take a look at what the team looks like now as as uh, world champions, defending champions, and we can move on from there. So this is the squad. You guys should be pretty familiar with this team by now. It hasn't really changed since we have no money and salary cap. It's been the same guys. For the most part, this entire video, this entire rebuild uh, series, except for additions of a few rookies. Johnny Manziel is now a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Derrick Henry is a Super Bowl winning running back along with Aaron Jones. The wide receivers are unbelievably good. Tight end could be a little bit better, but we had to lose our tight end last offseason. Uh, who was who was our tight end last off, or last episode? Was it Travis Kelsey? Did he retire? I don't remember. He might have he might have just not we couldn't bring him back because last episode we had the problem where the salary cap finally came back to bite us and I couldn't restructure as many big money contracts as I may have wanted to. And so we lost some people. So Albert O will start at tight end for this year. We are still on the lookout for a new right guard, but I mean, time's coming to an end. So we might just stick with Taylor Moten if, uh, if we have to, but the rest of the offense is looking good. I mean, this defense is unbelievable. This defense is, is actually unbelievable with three hall of famers in this series. Three Hall of Famers on the defensive line. Maybe Jadavion Clowney makes it in real life. Probably not. Uh, linebackers look really good, but we do lose uh, two major ones in Reuben Foster and Fred Warner and TJ Watt, but two major middle linebackers. But luckily we had gotten Nick Bolton before that, so he just fills right in. Blake Martinez will jump in at middle linebacker. Hopefully he can take that spot of Fred Warner. The safeties are unbelievable with Javon Holland and Cam Curl. Uh, yes, I understand that's not the picture for Cam Curl. Uh, or for uh, Javon Holland, but I can't do anything about it. <laughs> and then the corners are unbelievably good as well with Ramsey, uh, Bouye, and then we drafted Tariq Wollin this past episode, this past uh, offseason, so adding him to the cornerback room, which is already pretty good, I mean, it just keeps getting better and better. We're going to see how Deion Buchanan and Blake Martinez do, though. That's going to be the two biggest question marks for this season. We're going to figure out how they do how they develop, and if they can replace our guys or not. But we need to know what draft class we're using. 2022, I think, is the one we just did, right? Because that's Tariq Woolen. Yeah, I think this is the this is the Tariq Woolen class, if I make sure. Yeah, Deron Bland, Tariq Woolen, perfect. So we need to go and make it the 2023 NFL draft class. And then we will be good to rock and ro 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 roll. Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, looks like Will Anderson Jr. Who is that? Is that Ryan Mallett? No, that's not Ryan Mallett, is it? Who is that? I don't know who that is. Not at the top of my head. I can't recognize the face. Who is that? Is it Ryan Mallett? 
Or is it... It's a quarterback. But I can't put my finger on who that is. I don't know. Some of these player portraits get mixed up with the people who create the draft class. So just uh, keep that in mind. Especially for 2024. That one's completely screwed up. <laughs> but the this is the draft class that just happened this past offseason. So I shouldn't have to go too in-depth in it. Uh, these are the rookies this year. So we're not looking for a quarterback. So that's good. Running back... We don't really looking for one either, but maybe a Devon Achan down the board in the third round. Even a Chase Brown would be awesome. Deuce Vaughn, little Deuce Vaughn, five foot six. Uh, wide receivers don't really need one. <laughs> Is that Tyler? Uh, not Tyler Lockett. Jake Locker. That's Jake Locker for Jordan Addison. That's hilarious. Uh, Jordan Addison would be awesome. I don't really need a receiver either. Like we're not really in the market for anybody, really. We we have pretty much our team figured out but i'll put a couple guys on the board just to just to have tight ends we could use a tight end that's the one thing we probably could use so i'll put probably all these guys on the board uh, at least the top guys on the board and we'll keep an eye out on those guys left tackles maybe a backup maybe like an anton harrison backup or something uh left guard i'll put both of you on the board centers we'll put titman Yep. We'll put Michael John Michael Smith Jr. on there. I'll put Uluwatimi on there. I do like Uluwatimi, but I don't think he's really gotten the, the playtime in real life. Uh, we'll put Mouch on there, or Mach, however you want to say his name. I don't know. Osiris Torrance. City Sal, probably. I'll go back and get him. And then right tackles, obviously PJ, PJJ, Darnell Wright. Dewan Jones is huge. I love Dewan Jones. There's no way he's 375. He is guaranteed to be over 400 pounds. Absolutely. Have you ever seen that man? They had to build his helmet around him. <laughs> We're not going to be in play for Will Anderson Jr. Uh, but I'll put Kalijah Kansi, Miles Murphy, and DK Uzama on there. Maybe Zach Harrison could be fun. None of these guys are going to play because we have everybody on the defensive line, but it's fun. Isaiah Foskey, Keon White, Keanu Benton. We could turn him into a D tackle. That could be pretty good. Then actual D tackles, Jalen Carter, Mozzie Smith, Ryan Brissy. That's probably about it. Uh, left to side linebackers, Lucas Van Ness, Nolan Smith, BJ Ojolari, Tui, uh, Tui Poloto for sure. I like him a lot. Middle linebackers, Jack Campbell, Trenton Simpson, super fast, at least in real life he is. Noah Sewell. And then right outside linebackers, not really feeling anybody here. Maybe Nate Derek Hall, maybe Byron Young. Uh, maybe Nick Herbig. Maybe. I don't know. Haven't fully decided yet. And then corners. I'm going to put them all on here, but we're not going to be really in play for any of them. I'd love to get Christian Gonzalez, but I don't think we're going to be able to. Uh, Julius Brents, Jartavius Martin. We could turn him into a safety, I guess, uh, if we want to. Tyreek Stevenson, DJ Turner. Who else? Who else? Probably nobody else down the board because they're not going to get any playtime, so it would be a waste, really. Yeah, and nobody else down here is going to be high enough overall. And then free safeties. I mean, we don't really need any of them, any more of these guys, do we? I'll put Ronnie Hickman, the Rocket, on there. Brian Branch, uh, Marte Mapu, Jordan Battle. That's probably about it, yeah. And then kickers, we don't need a kicker, we don't need a punter. So there we go, that's going to be our board for this season. We'll see what, how it plays out. We will see how it plays out. I think we only have... Do we even have our own first round pick? I should probably check that now because I usually get surprised or shocked when we don't have a draft pick because I forget. So we do have every pick. Okay, perfect. We have every pick. We could trade a couple picks to get another first round pick, but is that really what we want to do? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Let's uh, start simulating. I will see you guys at the end of the year and we will figure out if we are going to be defending champs that are actually defending our crown. We have finished the year... 14 and 3 won the division obviously we're the number one seed it's it's old hat at this point that's what you expect that's what the browns do six years in a row we have been the number one seed we have won the division we have been the best team in football for six straight years so it's not a surprise that we are but what is a surprise it's what is what's going to come in the offseason so stick around for that but we take on the Baltimore Ravens in the divisional round. We'll get to that in a second. Let's take a look at these stats on the season. So Johnny Manziel continues to just absolutely be the best quarterback of all time. 
4,300 yards, 30 touchdowns, 4 picks, 74% completion percentage. I mean, he's just the GOAT. He's the G-O-A-T. It's the greatest quarterback to ever step on the football field, Johnny Football. I mean, it's in his name. Derrick Henry, 1,400 yards, 18 touchdowns. That's a phenomenal season from Derrick Henry. That's one of his better seasons he's had. Wow, okay. Stephon, oh my God. Speaking of one of the best, Stephon Diggs, 1,600 yards, 18 touchdowns. If that's not Offensive Player of the Year, then we got screwed again, but... That's got to be Offensive Player of the Year. 1,600 yards and 18 touchdowns? I mean, that's that's got to be the best season we've had in a receiver maybe in this entire series and the Giants series. I don't remember, but that's amazing. DK had a good year. AJ Brown had a good year. Alberto did all right. Uh, defensively, we had, oh, wow. Okay, 120 tackles from KPL. Then we had Nick Bolton with 112. Bouye had 78. Cam Curl, 75. Donald, 73. Uh, Tiger for loss leader was, of course, Donald with 17. Clowney, 13. Garrett had 12. So did Tyre Tart. Uh, sack leader, Donald, 14. Garrett, 12. Three and a half for Clowney. Two and a half for Tarts. Pick leader, peak, was KPL with five. Three for Ramsey, Ramsey. Two for Bouye. And then one for a few other guys. So those are some big time numbers from some big time players. So I'm happy about that. Good stuff. Now it's time for the divisional round against the Ravens. Let's see if we can get this done, boys. And we do. Big win, too. 38-17. We take on the Tennessee Titans in the AFC chip. We've got one chip. We've got one more game until a sixth straight Super Bowl. It's Eagles and Washington in the NFC side of things. Very interesting. I really hope Washington wins. I don't know if they will. They probably won't. But, I mean, they upset the three seed and they upset the one seed. So maybe Washington's the team of dreams this year. All we got to do is take care of the six-seeded Titans. It shouldn't be that hard. It's a cakewalk. Let's go get it done. Should be fairly straightforward. Browns, Titans, AFC Championship. I feel like we should easily walk past them. And it wasn't as, as easy as I thought, but we still get it done anyway. 34-28, beat the Titans, and we are in our sixth straight Super Bowl. Unfortunately... It is only our chance to win our second straight Super Bowl. We should be going for our sixth straight. We should be an absolute unmatched dynasty, and yet we are only going for our second one. <laughs> uh, kind of embarrassing. Unfortunately, the Eagles did make it past the Commanders. Did they? Or the well, I guess Washington. They were the two seed at 11 and six. Very interesting. One versus two matchup in the Super Bowl. I mean. There's nothing else to say except for let's go get our second championship. That's really all that's left. It is the Super Bowl, and I know there's a little bit of a visual glitch going on here, but that's what happens sometimes with the mods. We're down 3 nothing. We put up a, a touchdown there, but the Eagles come back with a field goal. It's 7-6. to six. If you have epilepsy, look away. <laughs> this could give you this could trigger it, I guess. 13-10, uh, to 17-13 into the fourth quarter. The Eagles just put up a huge touchdown. Come on, boys. Get it done. Oh my god. A seven yard rush by Johnny Manziel gets us into the nine. First and goal from the three. Touchdown Cleveland Browns. Downtown Cleveland Browns. And we've got our second championship, ladies and gentlemen. We've got our second championship. It's here. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> We're not going to jump in. If you have epilepsy, that seriously could cause something. So, uh, unfortunately, I have to just skip this play because I can't. Uh, it's even hurting me a little bit. I don't know what's going on with the field. I'm going to skip this out or I'm going to make it black for you so you don't see it. Uh, yeah, you're not going to see this play. I will let you know what happens. It's uh, knocked incomplete. And that's the ball game. Okay, perfect. I hope that this trophy celebration is a little bit better. Okay, perfect. <laughs> that, was, that was really bad. That was really, really bad. But it's two straight Super Bowls for the Cleveland Browns. It cements us as a dynasty, even though we technically already could have been considered one since we went to four straight before this, and then now five and six. Uh, so technically we are a dynasty, but we didn't have any wins to back that up. So now we do. Now we have two straight. Two out of six is not a good percentage, but hey, it, it's what happened. It's what happened. And we get another championship. And this is really, really big. Winning our second trophy. Because this offseason might have to have everything come crumbling down. And I don't say that lightly. We, next episode, might look very different from what we've looked like the past 
eight episodes, whatever it's been, we might look very differently in terms of who's on this team. I just want to warn you guys now because, again, I think there might be a limit on how many times you can restructure a certain player's contract in the lifespan of that of that contract. So I my unlimited money glitch has come back to bite me for the second year in a row, and I'll show you why in a minute when we get to the actual offseason. But let's find out who won Super MVP and all the other awards, and then we can talk about the my downfall as a team. All right, season recap. Manziel wins MVP of the Super Bowl. Joe Burrow gets MVP of the league. Gary Kubiak, coach of the year. Stefan Diggs, he did get it. He got offensive player of the year. I would hope so. I mean, that was a fantastic year. 1,600 yards, 18 touchdowns. Are you kidding me? Deion Jones for the Eagle team that we just beat won defensive player of the year. And then Garrett Wilson and Aiden Hutchinson won offensive defensive rookie of the year. So that's pretty similar. Didn't Aiden, did Aiden Hutchinson win it or did Sauce Gardner win it? I don't remember who, who got it. But that's back-to-back -back chips. Chips? For the Cleveland Browns, you love to see it. Two out of six, it is what it is. All right, so let's go and upgrade these players really quickly, and then we will go to the off season, and I will show you my dilemma. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this whatsoever. So, all right, here we are. You can see there's 16 players that need negotiations, that need new contracts. Tristan Worse, we will accept the option of. That's not a bad, that's not a, a deal, but DK Metcalf, AJ Bouye, KPL, Travis Frederick, Dre Greenlaw, Blake Martinez, Quandre Diggs, Drew Locke, that doesn't matter. Tony Jefferson, doesn't really matter that much. Javon Hargrave, Dion Buchanan, Nickel Roby Coleman, Lyle Collins, Vance McDonald, Quentin Spain. All of these guys will have to look for a new job next season because I've tried, I tried it with everybody. I tried to get as much money freed up and restructured of, of new contracts as possible. Uh, I couldn't. Same deal as last episode. I just, I couldn't restructure Aaron Donald. I couldn't restructure Manziel. I couldn't restructure Genevion Clowney. Nobody, nobody's contracts I could restructure wouldn't let me. Uh, they've caught up to my unlimited money glitch and they've shut it down. So, we're going to be losing some very valuable pieces, especially on the offensive line and especially just to our depth in general. Luckily, we're still going to have A.J. Brown, but this team is going to look significantly different headed into the final couple episodes. So unfortunately, I hate to do it, but we're just going to have to let those guys walk. Oh, that's brutal. That is brutal that we lost those guys. And we can't bring them back in free agency because we have no money. So the way the team looks now, I mean, we have no center. We have to draft a center this year. Uh, we have really no depth. We have only one tight end. The receivers now are Stefan Diggs, Chris Godwin, AJ Brown. On defense, we have really no depth at linebacker. We're going to, have to put Bryce Hupp for right now at, at left outside linebacker. The corners aren't as good as they once were. Yannick Ngakwe will have to start it right outside linebacker for right now. I mean, the linebacking core took a huge hit these past two years. But that's what happens, man. I dug myself into this hole. I only have myself to blame. <laughs> I dug myself into this hole. So it's it's my fault. And there's Travis Frederick at 32 years old, the best player in the, the class. It's sad to see. There's DK as well, 26 years old, 88 overall. That is a tough pill to swallow, especially Kevin Pierre-Lewis, because he was one of our uh, best players we've ever had in this in this rebuild. And we've, we've grown A.J. Bouye to what he is now. That's a little upsetting to see him gone, too. We took A.J. from, what, like a 69 overall, 68 overall, to what he was at his, as his peak, and now he's dropped down to an 84. But, I mean, I feel like we... We fathered him we we turn we mentored and we grew these players into the players they are now for now them to go on to other teams i it, it, it could be a sentimental moment it could be a, a like a mama bird moment sending your kids into the the future into their next chapter but i kind of want to just keep them <laughs> keep them on around on my team so we can continue to win championships now i don't know where we go from here we have to draft offensive line and we have to draft linebackers but is, are we going to be in a position to even be able to draft offensive line and linebackers? Probably not, because we have the last pick in the first round. So we're in a bad spot. <laughs> we are in a really, really bad spot. But again, I put us in this spot. I did this whole thing to myself, so I can't blame anybody else but myself.
Travis Frederick now goes to the New York Giants. That makes me sick. Uh, we have DK going to Tampa. Staff oh my god, they paired Stafford and, and DK together. That's just disgusting. Kevin Pierre Lewis is a Dallas Cowboy. Really, KPL? I thought you had values. Oh, that's disgusting. And now AJ, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers said, okay, bet. We're going to snipe every single one of your players. <sighs> okay, so we got to watch out for Tampa next year. That Stafford to DK combination is going to be pretty lethal. And now we have to go in and pretty much draft offensive line. I did scout Peter Skaronski because he could fill in at guard for us. But he's probably going to be gone before we even get to that spot. So I'll scout John Michael Schmitz. I'll scout... Um, who else? I mean, we need linebackers. So we need to grab probably Jack Campbell and Trenton Simpson in this class. I'm going to do both of those guys. That'll be our three private workouts. We need to see the mock draft to see where everybody's going to go. Mock draft number five. Will Anderson, number one to Chicago. Okay, so Bijan, funny enough, going to see, uh, going to Atlanta. So Peter Skronsky, pretty much out of the question. Uh, Jack Campbell could be out of the question. Man, all the tight ends are going to be gone too, aren't they? Ugh, we're in such a bad spot. Okay, so I could try to trade up to get Jack Campbell. That's an option. I could also try to trade up to get a tight end and then just go for go for Trenton Simpson in the third round. But I don't know if Trenton Simpson would be there in the third round. I know he's round three to four. So it's possible he could be there. But we also need a center. I need to get one of these centers. John Michael Schmitz is a possibility at center. Oh, we need... Okay, we need a few different things. We need a linebacker. We need a tight end. We probably even need another receiver. And we need... We certainly need a center. The center is the number one priority. It's either going to be Tittman or John Michael Schmitz. I hate it here. I absolutely hate it here. And I did it to myself, too. I did it to myself. Why do I do these things to myself? The world may never know. Let's see if I can use my... My powers of GMing to get a few picks ahead. So we got a trade with Philadelphia. They accept. I wish it wouldn't take me all the way back to the screen here. I wish it would take me to... Uh, take me to the promised land. I wish it would take me to this screen right here. Just go back to this. Alright, so now we have the 31st pick in the draft. We need to find whoever has pick 30. I'm not sure who has it. I guess we could go for pick 29. Who's got pick 29? Washington has pick 29. Uh, they decline, but I can throw in a, a draft pick from 2025. Trade offer accepted. Perfect. So we have pick 29 in the draft now. So we're getting a little bit closer. The thing is, do we use our first round pick to get the tight end? Do we get Laporta or Michael Mayer? Like, who do we go for? Or do we go for the center and make sure that we just lock it down? Or do we go Jack Campbell? There's a lot of different options and a lot of different opportunities for us. I have no idea what we're going to do. We need to find pick 27. Did I pass it already? I must have. There it is. It was at the top. Of course it was. Pick 27. Oh, they didn't accept it. Okay. Uh, I'll give you my 2024 sixth round pick, I guess. Trade off for accepted. Perfect. So now we have pick number 27 in the NFL draft. If we take a look at the mock draft, number 27 is projected to be the Cardinals at Sam Laporta. So right now we're on track to get one of the tight ends. We traded up enough to get that. So I would not be mad at either one of these. And the centers are projected to not go in the first round. Neither Schmitz or Tittman. 
So if we trade our second round pick to get up a little bit higher, then that could be useful. Chicago has pick 33. They also have pick 65. Just give me these three picks. I will give you all of my picks in 2025 because we're not going to need them. Trade declined. We don't need these picks. Don't need them. Trade declined. I will literally give you everything. Okay. Um, I'll give you a fifth round pick this year. And I'll give you a seventh round pick in 2024. Are you kidding me? Um, okay. I'll give you fifth round pick in 2025 then. Trade offer accepted. So we get the Bears second, third, and fourth round picks for a bunch of 2025 stuff that we're not going to need because we're not going to go to that draft. So perfect. Absolutely done. I think we can go to the draft now. Oh, this is going to be an experience, isn't it? This is going to be an experience. We have two first round picks because I was able to keep my other one. So we can make some things happen here. Start drafting. Bears have the number one overall pick. Let's see what they do. They take Will Anderson Jr. Paris Johnson Jr. goes to the Colts. Bijan heads to Atlanta. Tyree Wilson, Peter Skaronsky, Jalen Carter, Devin Witherspoon, Zay Flowers. Dolphins get Jordan Addison. Oh, that's... It almost just clicked in my head who that was. Oh, my God. Wait, no, I know who that is. I was looking for the Will Anderson. That's Jake Locker. Okay. The Will Anderson portrait was the one I was trying to figure out. Okay, that's Jake Locker, yeah. All right, let's keep moving on. Uh, JSN goes to Minnesota. Coming up on our pick now, Deontay Banks, Miles Murphy. Miles Murphy was projected to go late first round, and he goes at 18. Okay. That's not necessarily that good. Hey, Jack Campbell heads to the Lions. Look at that. Dalton Kincaid, Sam Laporta, do we think the line, the Bills take... The Bills can't do it, can they? They wouldn't dare take Michael Mayer. They wouldn't dare. They simply would not dare take him, would they? I can't risk it. I, I simply can't risk it if I could actually click the right thing. The quarterbacks, I just noticed, are still on the board. Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, all those guys are still on the board. So teams must not need quarterbacks in this universe. Uh, I, I can't risk it. I simply cannot risk not having the tight end that I want. So we will trade up with the Buffalo Bills. They certainly, they might not do it, but I just, I like I said, I can't risk it. We'll trade up one spot to get Michael Mayer. I, I, I just can't do it. I cannot risk not getting him, especially when Laporta just goes right to the Ravens. So we could grab a quarterback here, but we're not going to. We're going to grab ourselves Michael Mayer and have our tight end for the next couple episodes so that we don't have to rely on Alberto. <laughs> All right, perfect. And now we have the second or the first pick in the second round, thanks to Chicago. So I am fine with that. Lucas Van Ness, Nolan Smith, and then BJ Ojalare. So the quarterbacks are all on the board, which is kind of crazy, to be honest with you. But it's not like we could draft one of these guys and then trade Johnny Manziel because we don't have the money to trade Johnny Manziel. We couldn't take anything back. So now we need to figure out where we're going to go. We need center and we need... We need center and we need linebacker, middle linebacker. So if we go to middle linebacker, Trenton Simpson is still on the board. He's round three to four. That'll be fine. Derek Hall is an interesting option. I'm intrigued by Derek Hall. Hmm. Very intrigued by Derek Hall. He's probably not going to play middle linebacker. He looks good. I think I'm going to take him top of the second round. Only normal development. That sucks. I got baited. I got baited by Derek Hall. I should have just stuck to the plan. That's okay there. There we go. Now the quarterbacks are going. There goes Tipman. Tip. We have to be on the lookout for John Michael Schmitz. 
Anthony Richardson now. Oh, the Patriots got Will Levis. Hendon Hooker. Hard to know her. Marvin Mims, Keon White, Zach Charbonnet. There goes Musgrave. Keanu Benson. Come on. DJ Turner. Schoonmaker. Gervin Dexter. Bergeron. Downtown Sydney Brown. Jartavius Martin. Juice Scruggs. Ugh. That could have been bad. Devon Achan. Cam Smith. And then Byron Young. Okay, perfect. So we pick with back-to-back -back picks, and he's right here at the top of the board. Perfect. John Michael Schmitz will be our starting center for the final couple episodes. It's nowhere near as good as what Travis Frederick would have brought us, but hey, it's a body. And now we have the next pick. A little back-to-back -back action here. We could go Rishi Rice, which I think is where I'm going to go because we do need a linebacker, or we need a receiver. But there's a couple good ones down the board that could be value for us. Uh... Nah, I'm taking Rishi Rice. I'm taking Rishi Rice with this pick. Big pickup. That's our that's our DK replacement, I guess you could say. <laughs> and then we have the our own pick here in the third round. Kendra Miller, Josh Downs, Marte Mapu, Yaya Diaby, Zach Harrison. We need to hope. I don't want to be alive anymore. How did he go? Well, now we need Drew Sanders. To be our guy, right? Because we need a linebacker. Yeah, we need we need to get Drew Sanders. So we have to trade up. We have to trade up to get Drew Sanders with Carolina. That's simply what has to happen. So why do I keep doing that? I really didn't think the Trent, Trenton Simpson would get taken. Honestly. But he did. So here we are trading with Carolina for the third round pick. To get Drew Sanders. I could trade my pick... My, third, my own third round pick, which I might have to. Uh, that's not even close. I don't have a lot of 2025 picks, but I can give them 2024 stuff. We're getting close. What about if I do that instead? There we go. So two third round picks plus two sevens gets us... I probably didn't have to throw in the sevens. <laughs> gets us this pick. It was a, a rash decision. I mean, we have to have a middle linebacker. So we have to get Drew Sanders here. Hidden development, I'll take it. That's a solid pickup, and he's pretty athletic, so that's big. That's really, really big. Now we don't pick until the fourth round, thanks to Chicago. So we will simulate to our pick here. Uh, what's on our board still? So Jaden Reed, Oluwatimi, not a whole lot, actually. Noah Sewell and Nick Herbig are still here. I might have to just go off of what's left on the board straight up. But there's not a whole lot, is there? Why did I say it like that? There's not a whole lot uh, left on this board, is there? DJ Johnson, maybe? Because we need linebacker help. I know that for a fact. And we don't necessarily need receiver help. As much as getting Jaden Reed would be cool. We don't need corner. I don't think. Do we need corner? No, I mean, we lost Bouye. Which kind of hurts. Riley Moss is still here. We could get a white corner. I might go with Riley Moss. He's probably going to be normal development, but... We could grab Keely Ringo, I guess. But is Keely Ringo much better than Riley Moss? Maybe. Riley Moss might honestly be a little bit better. He's more athletic, it looks like. He's just a little smaller. Although he doesn't have the coverages that Ringo has. Ringo's got C and B. Actually, he's got double C. And Riley Moss has D and C. So, Keeley's a little bit better of a, of a coverage corner. But at this point, does it really matter? We're going to take Riley Moss. We're going to take Riley Moss. Normal development, I expected that. But he's pretty fast, pretty athletic. And he's a hot. So that helps. And then we'll skip to our fourth round pick. That is our actual fourth round pick. And then we don't have a fifth, so we'll go right to the sixth. All right, so we could have taken Clark Phillips, I guess, but it is what it is. Uh, receivers, we already got our guy, but there's Puka. Oh, okay, we'll take Puka then. I didn't realize he was still available. Puka Nakua, welcome to the squad. That's a huge pickup. That's another receiver that's decent. And then we'll skip to our sixth round pick. 
I don't even know what's going to be available. Probably nothing. Just Ronnie Hickman. All right, we'll, we'll take the rocket. The rocket, Ronnie Hickman, and then we will let the CPU handle that final, final pick. Mr. Irrelevant can be whoever they want to be. I feel like we made that work considering teams drafted players that I didn't think they were going to draft, like the Steelers taking Trenton Simpson. We end up getting Michael Mayers at 75. That'll be good enough to start over Alberto right away. That was a little bit of a miss with Derek Hall, for sure. 70 overall. Smits is a 70, but he has to start. So, uh, Rishi Rice, 76. That's a huge pickup. Drew Sanders, 71. Riley Moss, 71. Pook is an 80. That's a nice, solid pickup. And then Ronnie Hickman, 65. They took Cooper Hodges at 64. Okay. The rest of the class, a couple really, really solid guys. It is who it is. Pook is right up there, though. Okay. So, considering the... The entire team basically fell apart and we crumbled. Uh, I feel like I did a decent enough job rebuilding the team in one offseason. And, and only in one draft, basically. Because I didn't have any time to do free agency. Or I didn't have any money to do free agency. So Michael Mayer will... Oh, he can't. Uh, Michael Mayer will start at tight end. The offensive line is not as good now. But we've got receivers that I trust with Puka, Godwin, and Rishi Rice. So I like that. Receiving core looks looks better. We obviously have Manziel and, and Henry. And then on the defense, it's not it's not great. Derek Hall will start it right at left outside linebacker. This is not gonna happen. Uh, we'll have Bryce Huff start it at there at right outside linebacker. And then Nicobe Dean and uh, Nick Bolton, I guess, will start. I mean, we could have Drew Sanders start it at middle linebacker just because he's the, got the development trade over him. And then the corners are, are whatever, and the safeties are pretty good. So we're not as good of a team as we were the previous six seasons, but hey, that's what happens when you do the rebuild the way that I've done the rebuild. <laughs> it's not always going to work out for you in the end, but that was always Future Juice's problem, and now Future Juice is now Current Juice, and uh, Current Juice hates Past Juice. <laughs> So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. At least we sold out for the right reasons. We got two championships out of it. So, I mean, it's like we, we didn't sell out and then didn't win anything. We got two titles. But now we got to rebuild for these last two episodes, I think, right? Yeah, 2023. No, the 2024 draft class will be next episode. And then the next episode of that, after that will be the final video where we do the rookie year for the 2024 class. So, yeah, two more episodes left in this series. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave it a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club. Thank you so much for stopping by and watch. I truly appreciate it. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.